the church has a problem and they're very embarrassed about it. But we're going to talk about it today on Breaking Curses 101. Hi, I'm Joy with Breaking Curses 101. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. Um, hit the like button right now so you can boost my views so it can uh, the algorithm can share my video across the platform. I know I don't post very often, so I'm going to need you to get this out here and share as much as possible. So, yeah, also um, like, like, subscribe, share. Yeah, I think I got it all in. I got to talk about a problem today that the church is having. Um, and I say the church is in believers who are seeking deliverance and associated with a body of believers. It's a, a little problem. Actually, it's a huge problem. And it's, it's embarrassing. It's so embarrassing that nobody wants to really say what they're going through. They want deliverance for this thing, but they can't really talk about this thing in Christian circles because it's taboo. And this thing is addiction. Yes, the church is struggling with addiction. I'm not talking about the sexual stuff. Um, I'm talking about substance abuse in the church. Now, this is a catch. Deliverance is a children's bread. Deliverance is a process of casting out demons. So you're not looking for deliverance unless you're a Christian. The world doesn't care. Well, some people in the world, I guess, they're trying to solve their problems other ways. But um, generally speaking, when you come to God, you're trying to get something off of you. You're trying to get into your destiny. Unfortunately, We've got this, some things can be talked about and some things can't without a lot of judgment, criticism. And so I'm saying this and I'm trying to tiptoe lightly because I don't, I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad, but I'm still trying to describe your issue. So just recently, okay, no, you know what? I'm not even going to point to anybody specific because I think this problem is huge. Let me just read some statistics. All right. I got them up on another screen over here. Among people age 12 or older in 2021, you know, that was post lockdown. 61.2 million people admitted to illicit drug use in the, in the past year. Now, you know, that the past year in 2021 was 2020. And, we you know, when people got locked down, they were using all kinds of stuff. Okay. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of illicit drug use. Um, the most commonly illicit drug use, and this is from um, Health and Human Services. This is a survey that they gave out. So these are people who actually admit it. So, you know, this is not everybody because everybody didn't take the survey. So 61.2 million people used illicit drugs. The most commonly illicit use drug was marijuana, uh, which 52.5 people admitted to using. Um, nearly two in five young adults age 18 to 25 used illicit drugs and one in three young adults, 18 to 25 used marijuana in the past year. One in three, that's 33.3%. Okay. So if you got three young people in, in your face, one of them is smoking weed. Okay. And most likely if one smoking in the group that you have, they probably, it's probably a whole bunch of them. Okay. So again, 
more statistics. 9.2 million people age 12 and older misused opioids. Now, opioid misuse is escalating among elderly people. Now, let's keep going. 46.3 million people age 12 or older met the requirements or the criteria for having a substance abuse disorder. 46.3 million people. But check this out. This is crazy. In 2021, 94% of the people who admitted that they had substance abuse disorder did not get any form of treatment for it. Okay. 46.3 million people met the criteria for for substance abuse. Only 6% of those people got help. Okay. We got a lot of people walking around addicted now. From the time we are born until the time we die, drugs are being offered to us for multiple reasons. So let me give you the most commonly misused drugs. Let me get my little stats right. Okay, y'all. It's crazy. The most commonly misused drugs. Uh, pain relievers, cough and cold medicine, anti-diarrhea medicine, and motion sickness medicine. Those are four types of most abused medicines. But let me just give you a list of actual medications by name that people are abusing. So let me just go over the counter first. Robitussin. You know, Robitussin got meth in it. Meth. They're giving you meth. Okay. Have you ever taken Sudafed? Sudafedrine? Mm. That's crazy. Sudafedrine. I think that has the meth in it. Well, it's in the same family. Meth and Sudafedrine are in cough and cold medicines. Those are addictive. Uh, NyQuil, a sleep aid. People take NyQuil to go to sleep. And then you got the cough syrup, the nighttime cough syrups. They have basically a sleep aid in them. So you're getting meth and pseudoephedrine in the same medicine, the same OTC medicine. Okay. Now, let me give you the hardcore stuff that your doctor has to prescribe. You know, they don't let people just buy Robitussin anymore. You got to get it from behind the countertop, behind the counter. Okay, so not countertop, counter. So uh, in the in the pharmacy, in the back of the in the back of the um, drugstore. Okay, so here we go. The most misused drugs, addictive misused drugs, Valium. Xanax, Ambien, Sonata, Lunestra, Codeine, Morphine, Oxy, Oxycontin, Percocet, Percodan, Vicodin, Lorset, Adderall, Ritalin, and Concerta. And then, of course, marijuana, as at the top. So, wow. They offer you all these drugs for all of your problems. Now, if you're a young girl and you're hitting your menstrual cycle and those cramps start hitting, woo, you'll take anything your doctor gives you. <laughs> um, or you'd be popping, I mean, Tylenol that didn't work for me. I took whatever the doctors put in my hand. I'm just, gonna, I'm just admitting, okay? All right, so, I mean, I'm a product of this, drug culture all right right they give you um things what do you call it the the new term the bang bang they give you the bang bang when you when you first come out they give you uh you have the well child checkups and every, every well child checkup they're giving you the bang bang they're giving the child the bang bang and they and they're leaving the well child 
child check of sick. And then, uh, of course, when you're in labor, help me, Holy Ghost, when you are trying to push that baby out, they're like, woo, we got something for you. We got, what's that, codeine? Woo, I think they gave me some codeine. Oh, God. Ooh, it's bad, y'all. Okay. I never smoked marijuana. Didn't have to. They were slipping stuff in my um in my IV. <laughs> That's crazy. So and then it's just, I mean, the drugs are everywhere. They're on every corner. Walgreens is everywhere. They just hand it to you. Then those are the just those are the ones that are supposed to be good, good for you. And then you've got the kind that's not the bad people, the bad people, the crack, you know, marijuana it used to be on the bad list. Not everybody think it's okay. It's not okay. Um, marijuana brings in paranoia and anxiety. Maybe while you're smoking it, you're calm. But after that, you're real paranoid and doing dumb stuff. I've seen people who are smoking weed make the dumbest decisions. And you're like, dang. Didn't you know better? No, they didn't. They smoking weed. It just, it just attracts the worst kind of situations to you. So let me just give you a little background about, about pharmakia. Pharmakia, the Bible says in Revelation 18, 23, by the sorcery, you were deceived. Now, sorcery in the Bible, let me try to get right to my page. Pharmakia in the Bible, in the Greeks, in the strong concordance, in the uh, the Greek number for it is 5331. So it's some strange looking word like P-A-P-U-A-K-E-I-A. Basically, the English version is pharmakia. And, and it's translating pharmakia into the word sorcery. What is sorcery? The use of supernatural power over others through the sub assistance of spirits. Witchcraft. It's divination by the supposed assistance of evil spirits. Or the power of commanding evil spirits. It's magic, necromancy, witchcraft, enchantment. <clears throat> People doing all these things, they take drugs or take a smoke marijuana or whatever they have to do, whatever, I don't know, whatever they do to get into this altered state of mind so they can talk to spirits. It's a it opens up portals over your life so and gets you in touch with all these to, to the spirit world. It takes down the veil. Now, what is divin divination? The act of foretelling future events or revealing occult knowledge. Now, basically, pharmakia is divination. It's in the same family. Pharmakia equals sorcery. Sorcery is used in divination. So it's all in the same family. It's crazy, right? What is a pharmacy? A pharmacy is a place where we go to get drugs. It's a drugstore. Pharmacy, pharmacy school, the act of preparing and dispensing drugs. It's all drugs, okay? And you're like, well, you know, it's if there's good medicines out there. Okay, I'm just reading the Bible. Okay, let me let me get. I just I, let me just get to the Bible verse. Revelation eighteen twenty three. Just look it up. Abbreviating the the verse, just getting to the cr critical words. It says, "By the sorcery, 
by thy sorcery, you were deceived. Now, deceived in the Bible, in the Strong's Concordance, is number 4105. Planeo. Planeo is the word deceived. Planeo is translated into the word deceived. Planeo means to go astray, get off course, to deviate to wander so basically the verse is saying by the use of drugs you were caused to go off course misled so by the use of drugs medicine pharmacia you were caused to go off course this is going to trip a lot of people up in fact a lot of people are trying to get delivered right now and they won't let go of the drugs in every way, shape, or form. It's layers that you got to get rid of, okay? You got to get rid of the layers of drugs. First, you got to admit that there are certain foods that you're eating to make you feel bad. The crazy part about this whole thing is that there is such a lying spirit, a search of deception associated with the drug. The demons in the drugs convince you that they're not there. How can you help somebody when they don't think they need help? How? It's impossible. So, you have to pray that the Lord pulls the scales from their eyes, pull the blinders off their eyes so they can see. Now, in 1 King chapter 22, 22, I mean, chapter 22, verse 22. It says, I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. So look at, let's look at 1 Kings chapter 22. We have King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat getting together to go to war. King Ahab was convincing Jehoshaphat, yeah, let's go. Let's go do this thing. And King Jehoshaphat said, let's inquire of the Lord. And King Ahab said, I've got 400 prophets. Let's talk to them. And they say, yeah, go up, King. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. And uh, and Jehoshaphat, King Jehoshaphat said, are there any prophets of the most high God? Because I don't trust your 400 prophets of Baal. So he found one prophet, Micaiah. Micaiah said, basically, King Ahab, your time is up. God says, okay, who's going to take Ahab out of here? And a demon came up and said, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouths of the prophets. Now that's, let that echo in your head. I'll be a lying spirit in the mouths of the prophets. You can be a prophet and have a lying spirit attached to you. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So basically, King Ahab was deceived by his own prophets. He was misled to believe that he would be successful in war if he went to battle. He was misled. He was lied to. It's a lying spirit. There was a lying spirit in the mouths of the prophets that misled King Ahab. Lying, deceiving is the same thing. Now, the bottom line is, what I'm trying to say is, yes, it's embarrassing to have an addiction and be a Christian. But you heard, this, you heard the stats. 
millions, 46.3 million people age 12 and older admitted or met the criteria for having a substance abuse problem. And only 6% of those people got help. Of course, we know what kind of help the medical institutions offer. They offer you more drugs. <laughs> so you need you really need to call on Jesus. How do you this and so that like I say, it's it's a really uh you have to want the truth. The opposite of truth is lie. Oh no, lies are the absence of truth. Anyway, you need to hang around truth. You need to hang around people who are going to tell you the truth. You need to stay in the Bible, which is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father but by me. So, mm. If you're using drugs, you have opened the door to a spirit of deception that's going to lead you astray. Now, what types of deception, What? how does this manifest in reality? Let me put it that way. How does this manifest? I'm just going to go off the top of my head. There are people who lie. Just flat out lie, 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 lie. Crackheads, okay? Illegal drug users. They lie so badly, okay? I never met a crackhead that told the truth. <laughs> anyway, uh, then you have people who are deceived easily. They just believe anything people tell them. And then there are people who just can't stand the truth. You just can't say anything to them any kind of way, even if it's the truth. They won't receive it. You have to dance around those people. You have to walk on eggshells with those people. And then they still may not believe what you have to say. They have a lying spirit. They have a spirit of deception. It's like the wool is over their eyes. And then there are those people, I mean, you might be one of those people, but you attract liars. They just keep showing up. People just keep lying to you. Or you're just plain paranoid and you think everybody's lying. <laughs> you don't believe anything. Nobody's telling the truth. Just nobody's telling the truth. That's how you feel anyway. Uh, I don't know. I'm not saying it's impossible to get free. I'm saying first you need to be able to accept the truth. Now, for all of the prophets out there, people who have the gift of prophecy, your gifts can be tainted if you are on medication. Okay? Your gifts can be tainted. You're going to start having delusions. I mean, some of these drugs that I that I just named, Adderall, Ritalin, Oxy, Oxycontin, they bring delusions. So if you are trying to operate in the prophetic and you popping painkillers, your gift is going to be tainted. You're going to, maybe you're going to hit it sometimes, but you're going to be misleading people. Okay. You can't just believe every dream you have. You have to get the confirmation. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. You may hit the mark a lot, but you can seriously mislead people if you are on medication and you're trying to prophesy. Because you're popping lies. How can you pop a lie in your mouth and then speak the truth out of your mouth? Okay. Now. Ooh. 
Ooh. But the point is, you can be free. Jesus can set you free. You have to bind yourself to the truth, the word of God. The word of God. Stay in the word. You can be free. You got to want to be free. You got to stop getting offended by everybody who tells you the truth. You don't want to hear what they have to say because you have a lying spirit. It doesn't want you to receive the truth because it wants you to be misled to the point where, you, you know, you, you get, you, you step on a trap and fall in quicksand. You end up in quicksand. You end up in places you shouldn't be. It's just one of the ways the devil has to pick you off with deceiving, deception, lies. I think I said enough. Pharmakia equals sorcery and witchcraft and drugs. Pharmakia brings in a spirit that misleads you. It's a lying spirit. If you take medicine, even if it's supposed to do you some good, you are open to a lying spirit coming in. So in the mighty name of Jesus, I bind up every lying spirit and I expose the lies that it has told you. I bind up every lie that it has told you and I cast it out in Jesus name. Every lying spirit that doesn't have a legal right Go to the pit in the mighty name of Jesus. Go to the pit in the mighty name of Jesus. I expose the lies. I expose every lie in the name of Jesus. Okay, guys. Check out the membership. I have three levels. I'll talk about it at the end. Um, you can, well, you can check on, check out the site, breakingcurses101.com. Our meetings are usually the first Saturday of the month. If you are a member, if you don't have any money, you can be getting delivered from these free YouTube videos. And if these YouTube videos don't get you free, you need coaching. You need classes. You need to be taught. So check out the membership and I'll see you in the next video. Start your deliverance journey today with the Breaking Curses 101 School of Deliverance. You can get delivered in the privacy of your own home. We've served over 6,000 people since 2016. So check out my link in the description below to take my free course to get started.